raise happy and fulfilled children will come to fruition if you do not follow God's laws. And it's your number one duty as a parent to instill obedience to these instructions into your children if you wish for them to be robust adults. Sounds easy, no? Well, if you're anything like me, you may have struggled with following rules, especially as a child. We can't wing it and expect to raise good children. So how do we ensure that this time around it's different? Because so much is riding on it. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6 says, In these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. God's way is the right way. And if you're not right with him, whatever you do is guaranteed to fail. The Bible's truth, morals, and ethics are unmatched. The whole world is pretty much running on a knockoff version of the Ten Commandments. Even though society with its Ivy League daycares makes it seem like you can pull it off, you cannot delegate the task of raising a good child. It starts by recognizing and acknowledging God as the ultimate authority in your life. Then you must intentionally foster a personal relationship with him through spiritual discipline. What are spiritual disciplines? What is their relevance and how can they help you obey the Ten Commandments? And as it continues to say in verse 7, Teach them diligently unto thy children, and talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Spiritual disciplines include but are not limited to solitude, silence, fasting, frugality, and so on. Father Richard J. Foster says in his book Celebration of Discipline, God has ordained the disciplines of the spiritual life as the means by which we place ourselves where he can bless us. Acknowledging God as the ultimate authority in your life is very daunting for any new Christian. The illusion of being in control is one that plagues many, especially us men. But for anything I share with you today to work, this step is non-negotiable. Fostering any type of personal relationship takes effort and you don't sit on the sidelines. You have to make time and actively engage by being fully present. The same goes with God. You have to put in the time and effort to cultivate the most important relationship you have. And just like you need a new diet plan and some form of movement, to start seeing those extra pounds melt. Spiritual disciplines are the dumbbells that will help you trim that spiritual fat and leave you with a fit soul. The rest of the video focuses on three disciplines that are accessible to everyone and can be easily taught to any child. Everyone I meet today has anxiety, and I get it. Bills, the news, bullying. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Whatever is bothering you, pray and ask God to guide you through it. No strings attached, not even using big words. Just ask for guidance and watch what happens. Verse 7 goes on to say, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Kids inherently understand this. I look up my children in the eyes and their joy radiates through me. Worldly possessions mean nothing to them. However, I know that soon they will walk out into a world that to an untrained eye appears to be falling apart. I would feel like a failure if I didn't instill something, anything that would keep them sane in an insane world. And prayer is accessible to everyone at all times. When you take the focus off what you think you're lacking and instead become more thankful for what God has given you, it's like a superpower that will get you out of any rut. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. A structured gratitude practice where you don't just say thank you to your server as you leave them a tip, but instead have a daily spiritual discipline of keeping a gratitude journal, asking yourself what you're grateful for, and then writing down just one thing first thing in the morning will be a game changer for your soul. A good place to spark inspiration on how to structure your gratitude and self-examination practice is Benjamin Franklin's tiny book of virtues. He said, I was by this endeavor a better and happier man than I otherwise should have been if I had not attempted it. Be grateful for your spouse and your health. Even 
Even the sun rays provide vitamin D for free. Say thank you to the creator. It's easier to rush to some form of stimulation. Grabbing your phone or making that cup of coffee to distract yourself from the worry and the background noise in the mind. We all know parents with ungrateful children who don't have any skills to resist constantly wanting more stuff. As I talk about in this video here, I can't stand saying it in my kids. So we practice gratitude as a family every morning and I encourage you to do the same selfishness is toxic and the sooner our kids learn to take the focus off themselves and instead channel it onto the golden rule loving our neighbors as ourselves and doing unto others as we would have them do unto us ensures they carry this trait through adulthood in Luke chapter 22 verse 27 Jesus says for who is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth is not he that sitteth at meat but I am among you as he that serveth we must encourage encourage our kids to ask how they could be of service to others with their skills and talents. It can be as simple as saying a prayer for someone. Then as they grow up, they will enter the world understanding that they have a role to play in making a positive change in the world. Before we can experience God's favor, we must accept that he is the driver and all we can do is come along for the ride and follow his guidance. Then we must instill this obedience to God's commandments into our children by bringing them along for the ride as we foster a personal relationship with him. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 8 to 9 says, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates without the spiritual disciplines we're doomed to failure or as Psalm chapter 89 verses 30 to 32 says if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes thank you for spending your time with me if you found value here subscribe and I will see you soon